Hello, we want to welcome you today from uh, our uh, cardiac lab. We're at the American University of Beirut Medical Center, Beirut, Lebanon. I'm here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Ghazal, and we have a very interesting case for you of an uh, accurate Neo-Tavi case. So, uh, Fadi, why don't you start summarizing the case for us? Okay. So, we have an 85-year-old lady today who has symptomatic severe aortic stenosis. Uh, she weighs around 149, uh, 74 kilograms. She has hypertension and dyslipidemia. She's been having dyspnea on exertion for the last six months with New York class three um, symptoms. She had pre syncope on multiple occasions. We did an EKG in clinic and she was in sinus rhythm and no bundle branch block. Her laboratory investigation shows a hemoglobin of 11.9, creatinine of 0.7, and a pro BNP of 1,200. We did an echocardiogram showing a normal ejection fraction, a very critical aortic stenosis with a valve area of 0.5, a mean gradient of 72, and a pulmonary hypertension of 50. Uh, we did a baseline angiography that shows non-obstructive coronary artery disease that did not necessitate any stenting. We then evaluated her for her risk score. She has a Euro score 2 of 5.8, an STS score of 2.6, but she met three out of the four frailty index. We did a pre-TAVI CT scan showing a good rounded annulus with a perimeter of around 74 millimeter. The LVOT is around 75. There is no LVOT calcium. We did also uh, the sinuses showed a calcified leaflet, a very calcified non-coronary cusp that are wide. We did the implantation angle going to be around LAO21 cranial 3 on uh, the Trimentio software where the three uh, sinuses and the three commissures are aligned. And how about the extremities, uh, Fadi? Okay. Uh, well, actually, before that. Before that, uh, we also look at the coronary height, and the coronary heights are above 10 with white sinuses, so it's not going to be an issue for this case. And we did also a peripheral uh, uh, scan showing a good size, everything above 6, 7 millimeter, not very tortuous, with some calcification on the common iliac area. So, Fadi, what's your strategy now? Sheet size, access? Okay, so we're going to do what we usually do. We do our TAVIs all with local anesthesia, plus and minus moderate sedation, but the majority of patients, we don't give them any sedation. We're going to do a right femoral access with the 18 French lotus small sheet. We still don't have the ice sleeve 15 French sheet, but the 18 French uh, lotus will fit well with her diameter. We're going to do an ultrasound guided puncture. We're going to pre-close with two proglide. We're going to pre-dilate with a 22 times 40 ZMED balloon. And then we're going to use the Boston Accurate Neo medium size transcatheter heart valve. And is it important to pre-dilate with this type of valve? Yes, usually with the Neo and the company mandate, uh, the frame is a bit uh, not very strong. It has a low radial uh, force. So usually I pre-dilate all my, my valves. So tell us more about the design of that frame. and, and Practically speaking, what's the advantage of this valve? Okay, so this is actually a very interesting valve. It has multiple components. It has the upper crown, which anchors the leaflet. It has a supra-annular anchoring. The valve is supra-annular, so it has superior hemodynamics compared to other valves. It also has a lower crown that is only seven millimeter that minimizes interaction with the LVOT, which minimizes conduction uh, abnormalities. It has one of the lowest pacemaker rate and also have an inner and an outer PVL skirt to prevent PV paravalvular leak. Excellent. So the delivery system, it's uh, typically user So the delivery s uh, system is very user friendly. It's, it has a different um, delivery than other valve. We deliver from top down. The valve is extremely flexible. It works very well in uh, tortuous anatomy. It has two knobs and it makes to a very easy, uncomplicated three-step implantation. We do one, then you have the safety pin, the one usually release the upper crown, then the stabilization arches, then you remove safety pin and you have the knob two that usually release the lower crown. So if uh, we go to the next slide, we're going to show that usually we align, you're going to see during the case a black marker. The black marker should be at the lower bottom of um, our um, sinuses. Then the one will open the upper crown with gentle forward motion. It's very important during the case that the first operator always have a gentle forward pressure. Then we're going to release the stabilization arches and then release the lower crown. And how about uh, sizing? How do you so, size? Yes, so usually uh, there's three sizes, small, medium and large. It goes up to an annulus of 85 millimeters. Here we are in the 74 range. It falls in the middle of the medium 25. 
Right. Okay. So for this patient, uh, we're going to use an 18, 18 French sheet. We're going to use the medium size, the 25 uh, millimeter. And we're going to uh, pre-dilate with a 22 balloon. We're going to pre-dilate with a 22 balloon. So let's get to work. Let's get started. Okay. Do you like to do your stick under the, the micro ultrasound guided micro? I used to do it under fluoroscopy only, yeah. but I realized that it's much easier doing an ultrasound to see where the bifurcation, and you can choose really a spot where there is no calcium. Sure. Okay. So, um, please concentrate on the screen here. As you can tell, I'm going to just dim the light a bit. So, here you can see on the screen there is three vessels. This is the SFA profunda, and this is the femoral vein. I'm going to scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, until you see one vessel, I'm going to go back down, you see the three vessels next to each other, you see the progeza, yes. so SFA profunda, and I'm going to keep going up until I see only the common family. So this is my puncture set. Middle of the screen, and then I try to do, and you can see my needle going yeah. in, and it's in the middle of the artery. Okay, so now you see the nice spurt. You go with the micropuncture wire. And you continue the rest on floor. So now we exchange for the, I just put a six French dilator and we're gonna put the two pro proglides. Pro so we go with the first proglide. Some people do the parallel technique and some people do the 10 and two. I'm gonna do the 10 and two today. Okay, please concentrate here. We go in till the white marker. Dr. Ghazal Ziad is gonna remove the, the wire. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna see a good spurt of blood. I'm gonna do lever one, pull back until there's no back flow. I'm at 10 and do my first lever, okay? You cut it, move forward a bit, lever down. Gather the first two sutures. Secure them on the side and you Secure reintroduce them. the wire. Reintroduce the wire. Between the two white dots. Yes. Make sure the wire goes up smoothly. Okay, I'm in the aorta. Remove. I remove. The proglide device. I put the second one. Give us the second device. The second proglide is going to be on the two o'clock. So same thing, you go in till the white dot white marker, wire out, I go in, pull back until there's no resistance. Same maneuver. Same Ziad, can you hold this here, please? Yes, and secure the second probe. Second on the other side, out of the way. Now you reintroduce the wire. And usually I take an 8 French sheet here. Now we're going to introduce the 18 French sheet. Ziad, can you show me below, please? I always look at the sheet going up just so we don't have any surprises. The Lotus sheet is a very nice sheet. It's a very hydrophilic. It goes just nicely. Okay. Okay. So I usually take an AL1. Uh, some other people take a Terumo. I know you prefer the Terumo more. Yeah, it's so here it's crossed. Cross Whenever I cross, I directly go to RAO. Make sure I'm going to the apex. There's no point. I advance gently my AL1. And here, I exchange to a pigtail. I don't like to do it over an AL1. So we go with the exchange wire. The left. Exchange wire here, please. Okay. So here, whenever I have the wire close, I clock down my AL1 so it points towards the apex, and then I advance my wire, OK? One catheter in the aorta, one catheter in the LV. You can tell this is a very critical aortic stenosis. We have a peak gradient of uh, 100. Uh, we're going to pre-dilate very well because the valve is very calcified. I'm going to take here a 22 uh, true balloon. 
uh, to predilate. The mean diameter uh, uh, derived from the perimeter is 23. Yes. So I take one millimeter less, less. with when I use the Neo Accurate. Uh, pace 180, please. Oh, yeah. Inflate. Okay, but down. Down. Off pacing. Off pacing. Okay. See. So you see, Ziad, it, it took a lot of force to open it. Okay. So we want to make sure the pressure is down a bit. Um, now it's coming back, okay. So I want to make sure we did not cause a severe AI, okay? So, so here, this is the new accurate system. Here we have the valve loaded with the, load, uh, with the loader. This loader has to go through the sheet, and when you're done, you park it here, okay? And then you have, this is the handle. It has three things you need to do here. You have knob number one, which the first half of it releases the upper crown. When you go all the way, you release the stabilization arches. After we're happy with our position, we remove the safety pin, and then the knob two will release the lower crown. This movement has to be done very quickly. So one is slow, two is fast, safety. When we're gonna introduce the valve, we're gonna make sure there's a black marker or a black cells that we wanna put at the bottom of uh, the sinuses, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put the loader in, then the valve, be careful the wire. This is gonna be parked here. Ziad, yeah, you have the, have the wire? Oh, okay. The valve is moving very slowly, very smoothly. I'm gonna go, you're gonna see how it's gonna track on the arch. So we're gonna see the valve track very beautifully across the arch, and we wanna try to maintain it on the outer, outer curve, okay? So I'm gonna zoom in one. And you can see here there's a black marker. This black marker, we, has, we have to put it at the analyst, okay? So and I'm, I'm gonna go in gently. We're still at the outer curve. I'm gonna go in a bit more. Can I change the back angle or? Yes. Inject. I inject. I think we're good here. So just maintain pressure. Pressure. First, uh, on the second operator, open the first one very slowly. slowly. Oh, okay. Very slowly open, very slowly. Until you see the upper crowns. More. More. Okay, yeah, no, we're gonna take an angiogram. Stop here. Okay. Inject. It's okay, it's still okay. Okay, mm -hmm. I think it's fine, huh? Yeah, it's, and then now you continue with the Yeah, continue with the first slowly. one. Still slowly. Until it's very slowly. Slowly. So now it's you're going to see, it's okay, it's no, it's fine, uh, continue, you're going to see the stabilization arches open, go all the way, all the way, Ziad, mm -hmm. all the way, okay, you can see the stabilization arches that made the system more coaxial and the valve, all the way until hard stop. Yes. Hard, hard stop. stop, okay, we're going to take an angiogram here, picture. Actually, I think we're very good. Okay. Pigtail, Ziad, please remove the pigtail. Ziad, remove the pigtail, please. Remove it, remove it. Oh, okay. It's okay, can I remove it? Yeah, remove it, remove it, it's okay, it's okay, remove it. Okay. Safety, now look at him, he has safety button. Okay, I'm gonna do it under, s up. Uh, pull it, uh, pull it up, okay. And now very quickly, you're gonna do two. Do it, yalla. Okay, very nice. I'm gonna pull the wire here. You have to pull the wire to centralize the nose cone. And then gently, I'm gonna pull back my system. And we're gonna do one second. Two first. Inverse. Uh, two first. The inverse. Okay, until hard stop. Okay, and we're good here. Okay. Anjay? Hmm, there's some AI. We're a bit high. No, we're not high. 
No, no, the position is good. Perfect. So, so we have to post that. I'm yeah. gonna take the same balloon. Okay, I'm gonna pace at 180. Pacing. Pace 180. 180. I'll go up with the balloon. Okay. Down with the balloon. And off pacing. So you, you can tell that the frame now is much better open. So now we have a very round frame. Uh, now, look at this amazing result. We had 200 peak to peak gradient to start the case. We have no gradient. We have excellent separation between your aortic diastolic pressure and your LV EDP that is less than 10. So I am 100% sure we, we achieved very good hemodynamics. We don't have any significant paravalvular leak. We have a well expanded frame. Uh, I think this is a very good result. I'm gonna repeat an angiogram and look at the echo as well. Inject. Beautiful, uh, really nice. Very so nice. that's a very good result. We see there is a trace tiny uh, jet on the left coronary cusp. Uh, however, I'm not going to do anything about no, this no, trivial. This is, uh, we have very good hemodynamics, very good AR index, and no gradient. And I think we achieved what we want to achieve today Either? as well. And actually, it is a very user friendly. Deployment. deployment. And uh, just another thing as well, we still have a r normal QRS, so we don't have any widening, we don't have any left bundle and no hard block. And that's why, because we have a very short frame of the neo accurate, so the interaction with the LVOT and the and conduction system is very low. That's another advantage of the valve. Uh, I want to thank everyone uh, from our cath lab for this very uh, instructive, illustrative case that shows the advantages of the neo accurate system. I think we achieved a very good result, very good gradients, no paravalvular leak, and no hard block. And it's really an elegant system. Uh, there is really more control in the deployment, ease of deployment, and it looks quite predictable. I agree Thank with you. you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you from the UB lab and um, hope you enjoy your golf PCR.